welcome to the MTA Podcast Series, a weekly audio cast featuring interviews with recognized industry professionals, and your host, Ed Carlson. Thursday, October 8th, 2009. The greatest market indicator yet invented was developed by A.W. Cohen in 1955. It is called the NYSE Bullish Percent Index. Today's guest is Tom Dorsey, president and co-founder of Dorsey Wright & Associates, a registered investment advisory firm whose business includes professional management of equity portfolios, investment research services for numerous broker-dealers, and large institutions around the world. Tommy Dorsey has a B.S. Business Administration and Economics degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. He's the author of six books and numerous articles. Tom's been a guest on Fox News and Bloomberg Television as well as CNBC. And he's an American and world record holder in powerlifting for the 50 to 55 age group and has, is a FAA licensed hot air balloon pilot. Tom Dorsey, welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much. What's uh, what's going on in Virginia today? Is it uh, is it autumn there too? Well, I'll tell you what. You know, I was looking at the farmers' almanac the other day, and uh, I'll give you a question: What month has the most clear skies of the year? <laughs> well, hey, yes, yeah. hey, yes, it's twelve months. In, in Seattle, it's probably August. Well, well, in general, it's October, and it's funny because, because a high pressure area apparently forms around West Virginia. And that uh, keeps our skies uh, blue here at least, and that <laughs> I mean it kind of blocks them from coming in. So it's, uh, I get this farmers almanac thing every day. It's kind of cool. I enjoy it. Yeah. I love the weather. Yeah. Ken and I are always looking at the weather and trying to figure out. Uh, we're, we're we're frustrated weathermen. Frustrated weathermen. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot in common with the weatherman. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Tom, I, I must admit, I found uh, your description of your firm different than how I would have characterized it. I've always thought of Dorsey Wright as the world's premier educational and research site for point-and-figure analysis, uh, sort of a oh, standard bearer for point-and-figure similar to uh, Robert Prechter and Elliott Wave. Well, you are correct there because the when we started Dorsey Wright and so it all began with me back in at Week for Securities when I developed and managed their um, – derivatives department a week for securities um, the first person that I hired brought a book with him and said you know Tom uh, while, while you're developing this department um, I'm going to be the guy who gives you the stock recommendations and sectors and markets and things like this here I want you to I want you to understand how I think and he gave me the book by A.W. Cohen uh, written in 1955 little paperback book and I went down to Virginia Beach that night with my wife uh, I was laying in bed and opened the book to the introduction and read the first paragraph of the introduction, and my life profoundly changed that moment. Uh, having been a stockbroker for a number of years at Merrill Lynch, I realized reading that paragraph uh, that brought me back to probably the most important course I ever had in college, which was Economics 101. All of a sudden, it hit me between the eyes that all of the obfuscation on Wall Street and all of the clouds and, and, and the fundamentals and things of that nature were cleared away when I came to the realization that if there are more buyers than sellers willing to sell, price must rise. If there are more sellers than buyers willing to buy, price must decline. If buying and selling is equal, price must remain the same. And I sat back and I thought about that and I said, it's something you know, you have a degree in this. Why didn't you ever think about this when you were a, a broker at Merrill Lynch? And it was because the firm policy was that you didn't think about that, that you just sold what the firm gave you and, and the fundamentals and that type of thing. And I sat back and I realized, I said, you know, all of the stockbrokers that I know, and I know a lot of stockbrokers, and I think about myself as the average stockbroker, what would this have meant to me? <clears throat> and I hadn't even read any further in the book yet. I just came to the understanding of what the book was about, that it was simply a logical, organized way of recording this imbalance between supply and demand. I didn't need to go any further to know that this was the epiphany for me. I had arrived at what I considered the holy grail of investing, which was supply and demand and the imbalance between that, because there is nothing else. It doesn't matter what methodology that you use, the price change, the, what causes that price to change, is that, is that uh, war between uh, supply and demand. And once I understood that for a second, then I said, my God, this is something that every one of us need uh, that don't have in this business, 
and it would have made such a major difference in my life if I had had this kind of thing to look at rather than just the fundamentals. It would have made a difference in the profitability of my customers. And I said, you know, I know, I know why I'm, I'm here on this earth. And that's to read this book, to understand it, and begin to teach this to my brothers and sisters for the rest of my life. And that's, that's where it comes into play. Uh-huh. And I have been doing that ever since I finished reading that book. That's precisely what I've been doing, and that's now over 30 years. Over 30 years. Oh, fantastic. You know, uh, you're, you're talking with a former stockbroker who spent a lot of time with your website, and uh, I, I can just vouch for everything you've just said. Uh, as, you know, speaking of your website, uh, I, I, I would characterize it as, as overwhelming in the amount of information it provides. You, you surely must have some help. Well, it, that's a funny thing about that. If, you, if a person wanted to write a book on productivity, you'd want to come to Dorsey Wright & Associates and sit around here for a while because we only have 12 people in the home office. We have a programmer who lives in Michigan. Um, we now have a programmer with us, uh, or I wouldn't say really a programmer, someone well-versed in that uh, area that uh, creates models for us and manufactures for us here. And we now, over the years, have created the largest uh, and most comprehensive portfolio and charting system in the world on the Internet. Some of the things that we do right now uh, are the future of investing, like the models that we create, the guided models we create we create for professionals. Um, these models, uh, in essence, we do, we do on computer now what we used to do by hand. Twenty-three years ago, the rite of passage at Dorsey Wright when you were an intern is you came in and, and the rite of passage was to update the relative strength charts by hand and you had to divide one thing by another, and, and then you updated the chart by hand. And that's what you did as an intern 23 years ago. Now, as the computer capacity has grown throughout the years, it's played right into our hands. So the things that we've always done by hand, we can now do so many more by computer. And because the point and figure method is so clear and concise, it's the only method of technical analysis that gets clear buy and sell signals, we have been able to teach the computer how we think. So we create models that the computer now can run by itself. And take, for instance, our dynamic asset level investing, which is our um, tactical uh, model, which really positions our aircraft carrier in the right direction. In 2008, did not own any stocks whatsoever, none. We didn't own any stocks. Um, it didn't allow any in. And it wasn't through any brilliance on our part. We just simply taught the computer how we would do this by hand. If it, was 20, if it was 23 years ago, we would have done the same thing and come up with the same answer by hand, except we allow the computer to do it now. So if I were to compare and contrast, let's say the Standard & Poor's 500, and let's say take IBM, and I want to compare and contrast IBM on a relative strength basis with every other stock in the Standard & Poor's 500, I have to compare with 499 other stocks. By the time I finish this endeavor, I have created 2,500 charts that the computer then has to look at and evaluate and, and collate for us. By the time each the night is finished, we probably create each night at Dorsey Wright 470,000 charts every single night. And oh, we, oh. We, we span the globe because every week we follow every country. In fact, we follow more non-U.S. countries companies than, country, than, than the U.S. companies. Uh, we, every exchange in the world that has a stock, we follow it just like we do the United States. We have uh, reports on those. We have uh, the charting and portfolio system in Egypt, Indonesia, Malaysia, the whole thing. Before we got uh, too much further into this, I, I really wanted to get a little background on point figure itself. You know, I, I realize it's been around a long time. Uh, you, you're talking about all this computerized uh, manipulation of point and figure charts. Um, you know, my question was, uh, in this age of computerized trading and algorithms and probability analysis, uh, explain to us why point and figure is still relevant in today's markets. It's relevant because of just what I finished telling you before. It's relevant because of its simplicity. When you get down to the bottom line, and I don't care if it's an algorithm uh, you know, that, that uh, long-term capital used. Uh, I don't care if it's an algorithm that whomever might want to use or it's uh, some kind of um, mathematical formula from MIT or, 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 or Harvard. It comes down to the basis in the end. If there are more buyers than sellers willing to sell, price must rise. If there are more sellers, that's right, supply and demand. You can put a square root over the top of that. You can send it to MIT, have that macerated, do whatever you want, make it as complicated as you want. It comes down to that in the end. There is nothing else. 
So if that is in fact the case, then go right directly to the root, which is the point and figure method of technical analysis. Of course, you can, of course, bar charts and things like that do the same kinds of things. However, they're not clear and they're very subjective. If I, uh -huh. if I, if I sent a bar chart around to 15 different people and said, show me the head and shoulders tops, I'd get 15 different answers more than likely. If I sent a point and figure chart around to, to uh, 15 different people and said, show me the triple top by signal, you have to get the same answer from everyone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. There is no room for speculation. We're going to continue with Tom Dorsey in a moment, but first a reminder that on next week's program, we'll have Robert Johnson, Associate Director of Economic Analysis at Morningstar, as our guest, when we'll finally answer the question, does getting wealthy only require the ability to count to five? Tom, the influence of sports in your life shows up in your work every day. Dorsey Wright is always speaking about which team is on the field, offense or defense, and who has possession of the ball. And, of course, as I mentioned in the introduction, you're a champion power lifter. Can you explain some of the psychological aspects of sports competition that can be applied to investing? Well, the psychological aspects of it, number one, is the desire to be the best in the world. And when someone comes to us at Dorsey Wright & Associates, it's not something where half measures will yield you anything. And we'll be the first person to tell you, we're not a newsletter. We don't just put out the five stocks you ought to buy and, and that's it and go have fun. You have to make a commitment to become good at what we do because half measures will yield nothing. So when a person comes to us and says, yes, I'm ready to embrace this, then we can help you uh, along the way. And the desire that we have and when, when we educate professionals in this methodology is that we're helping you get on the track to become absolutely world class. And like I said, half measures yield nothing. Um, a passerby once asked Aristotle uh, if, you, if he could please tell them how to get to the Parthenon. And he said, yes, I can. He said, just make sure every step you take is in that direction. And that's what you have to do with us, and that's what you do in sports, and that's what you do to become world-class at golf or world-class at baseball. You make sure every step you take is in that direction, and it, then eventually it will happen. To become world-class, it takes about 10 years. So if a person asks me, how, how long will it take me to become truly great? It's going to take you about 10 years and probably 10,000 hours. It took us a million charts that we figured to, to look at a million charts and evaluate a million charts to become world class at this. So it's not overnight, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a journey of, of love and wanting to be good for your customers and, and, do, and do well for your customers. And I think above all, wake up in the morning and know that you're a true craftsman. I can tell you what, I spent many years coming to Merrill Lynch totally unprepared, totally unprepared. And that's the most horrifying thing in the world uh, is to be unprepared when you're coming to work. What we try to do is make sure that you are prepared, you're educated, you understand the program, uh, you want to become world class, and then we're going to also uh, support you in the most comprehensive portfolio and charting system that you could possibly have. Yeah. You know, I, I know you, uh, you, you, you manage a lot of money for a lot of folks. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are curious about uh, this question. Do you, do you folks at Dorsey Ride or do you personally, Tommy, do you pay attention to other forms of technical analysis or are you strictly point and figure? Yeah, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We are 100% point and figure. We have no televisions in the office here. We do not read anything. Uh, we don't study anything. We don't look at anything else. We are. We, we make sure every step we take is in this direction. And my desire in the beginning was to become known as the absolute best in point and figure charting in the world. And I don't say this self-servingly. I think we probably are are are, are there. Um, but that's because we, we are absolutely unequivocally focused on what we do. And I think that's what a person has to do. And, I, you know, I think uh, there, uh, there are many, many other methodologies that work in the right people's hands. You know, I've even seen some people who use astrology to do a great job. And there are bar chartists out there and candlestick chartists and things of that nature. Most of it I'm not smart enough to understand, but we do what we do. In fact, when we hire someone from, for Dorsey Wright & Associates, you have to have been an intern with us for a number of years so that you started out learning what we do. We don't have to deprogram you from the beginning, and, uh, and this is all you do is, is, is this. Uh-huh. Well, let me, let me put that question in another way, uh, a little more pointed. Uh, let's say you've got a position on based on a point-and-figure chart. Uh, would you use, uh, say, a stop-loss order to get out of that, or do you wait for a point-and-figure uh, signal? Well, of course, you'd, a stop-loss order, that's a very broad 
uh, very broad uh, statement because a stop loss order could be a point and finger signal where the stock actually gives a sell signal or breaks okay. the trend line. I would say no, I wouldn't use a stop just an arbitrary saying, well, I'll just take a 5% stop and stop out here because right. you're going to miss a lot of the play. When you think about uh, the year 2000, uh, let's say April of the year 2000, we went long oil in our, in our sector rotation model, and we stayed long oil for seven years. And we went through periods where we had 20% drawdowns, but on a relative strength basis, our relative strength charts, uh, uh, versus oil versus the S&P 500 said, you better be in oil, not the S&P 500. So we stayed in oil for seven years and still went through 20% drawdowns where another person might have put a stop in and said, I'll take a 10% hit and that'll be it, and probably never got in it. So you've got to be very careful in the stops that you use, and in most cases you're better off uh, putting that stop close to some kind of sell signal and trend line break on a point and figure basis. And that suggests that in many cases, if your, your risk down to your stop is not palatable, you need to wait for a pullback in the stock and buy the stock better. Well, speaking of uh, specific investments, we couldn't uh, wrap up today's podcast without asking you, uh, with the markets having moved up 60% in the last, what, six months, uh, where does Dorsey Wright think the markets are headed? Well, we don't think about those things. We'll leave that to CNBC and whatnot. People can tune into there and get, uh, get all kinds of ideas all day. We don't predict. We went along the market March 13th when the bullish percent reversed up, which is one-third of our three-legged stool. The other two-thirds of our three-legged stool – um, had us in commodities for the first, uh, I'd say, third of the year, then pushed us into U.S. equities, and we've been in, in international equities and, in particular, emerging markets for almost all of the year. Um, so we are in those, our foot's in the stirrup, and, and we're running the best plays that we possibly can now. We simply watch the indicators now to determine at what point in the future um, the defensive team will move on the field. So we don't do any predicting. We'll leave that to other people. We're not very good at predicting. Uh huh. Well, Tony, um, it's been great having you with us this morning. Uh, before we wrap it up, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, not, not really. You know, but I, I think I think some of the things that we do now with the modeling that we do through relative strength, the stuff that we used to do by hand with the computers, now we can. In fact, for myself, uh, I think what's kind of interesting is I run an automatic relative strength model in Malaysia. Uh, Indonesia, Egypt, Germany, Sweden, Australia, uh, Hong Kong, uh, and the U.S., and it doesn't take one minute uh, a week to do it. And these are in-country, in those currencies, from rupees to, um, uh, to rupees to uh, uh, Australian dollars. Um, that's where we have come now. So I'm going to let you go and take care of that cold. No, oh, thank you, Tommy. It's been great having you here this morning. That wraps up today's MTA podcast. I'm Ed Carlson in Seattle. You can follow me at fatechnicaladvisor.blogspot.com or contact me at fatechnicaladvisor at comcast.net. Send us your comments and suggestions. Let's keep our stops tight, people, and good day.